Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. This video is about tree selection. We've got a new playlist on tree selection and I expect to be adding to it for years because that's a key part of our job as hunters to pick the right tree, but we also need it to be a safe tree. This tree behind me has got some history. For you and for me, it was in December 2020 that I executed the, the video timed climb to 25 feet in 2.5 minutes. It was on this same power cord preset. And I got in this tree only once last year in hunting season. I was looking forward to coming back here. It's a great spot to hunt near my home. I have tagged two mature bucks out of this tree in the last decade. And I was looking forward to coming back here. And when I did so, I noticed it was an unsafe situation due to a large dead tree nearby. And sure enough, I came back later in the season, not having hunted it again, and there was a huge dead branch laying against this tree, and that, that could have taken me out should I have been in this tree at the time. Here in Pennsylvania, like most of the country, we're suffering from the loss of the ash trees. The problem here is it comprises in places 50% of our forest. So there are tons of dead trees falling down all over the place. Arborists will refer to a dead tree or a dead branch on a tree as a widow maker because that's what it creates. We've got to be careful about our climbing situation. And so I'm self-filming here. I dare not take any friends into the sacred hunting spots. And I'm going to give you a little taste of a real world situation, why this tree is dangerous. We're going to take a quick look around and we're going to pick out another tree. I'm going to self-film the whole thing. I will edit what I feel needs editing. And so let's, uh, let's get started. So here's our perspective at the tree itself. And we'll look up. And if you can see my power cord lines dancing, the big sycamore tree is on the right and I'm actually climbing the smaller elm tree on the other side of it and it works out real well. When I get up there I can actually hunt this tree fairly well without a platform although last year I did have one right about where the center of my field of view is. Great spot and uh, just so you have your directions oriented properly I the, the video started and remains with me facing east now there's a lot of underbrush here right right I've got to get up over in order to get a shooting lane uh, east but the deer go north south we're in a north south travel funnel there's a large waterway behind me to the west so I'm gonna pan around a little bit you are just see a lot of brush this is why I need to get up high we're looking south now there is a small trail uh, just 10 yards away and now we're going to look west as I look west you can see a pretty good shooting lane there out to 25 yards just more and more underbrush this area is getting thicker and thicker with the more trees that die okay so what makes it unsafe well panning back towards the southwest look at this giant ash tree that's easily 90 feet high and it's leaning right towards me and it go a little further uh, west northwest that's another dead tree and it's already shed its top and it's falling down right on top of me I gotta get away from these hazards but I don't want to go too far my permission doesn't go forever and I want to stay right here because this is a funnel so let's take a quick walk okay I'm still facing east and I've only moved about 20 yards and there is a really straight hickory tree right really straight tree no visible crotches on it a stick climber might like to climb that tree and I could do it really easily with my hitch climbing method but the problem is one of shooting lanes there's there's just too much brush behind it and the trail basically goes under it and so the the deer would be literally underneath me and I like them to be 15 20 year, yards away so I'm not excluding that tree from consideration but it's not ideal. Uh, I've got a good shot right here in this direction, but looking right here, we've got a little bit of a, a cross-sectional trail, and everything comes just a little bit too close. So let's go the other way. I'm back at my tree, back at my preset. We're just doing what we can 
to show you a piece of real world tree selection. I realize that my woods and your woods might look completely different, right? We've got more in common than our forests do. Now here's a little piece of history. So uh, we are still looking east and we've moved about 25 yards. So this very large sycamore tree uh, was one of the first tree I hunted out of in this area. I call it Big Sick and it's got a crotch. See that crotch? It's about 32 feet up in the air, something like that. I've put a throw ball up over that and I've hunted out of this tree, but it's just so large that it's hard to get 360 shooting. And so it's a possibility, but let's keep going. I moved another 15 yards and we've got, we've got a nice clearing here. We've got a nice clearing. And why do we have a clearing? Well, here's another gigantic dead ash tree. And it's it started coming down, right? We've got part of it is already shed on the right side, and but it, it, it does afford a, a fairly good opening. And so if the deer are traveling here from left to right, as I'm looking east right now, this would be a good area to cover. So how can I take advantage of this opening I'm in? So if I look left and right, well, here's a rather, a tree, you know, most climbers would just walk right by because it's leaning at like a 35 degree angle. But look what it's got here. Well, the, the top is twisted and broken off. But that branch there, vertical branch, you know, that's seven, eight inches thick. And right there is a fairly decent crotch. I could get a throw ball right there in that crotch. And I could position myself right on that stem and take advantage, flipping back the other direction, of this great big opening and get a, get a really nice shot and uh, you'll just have to trust me because I pre-scouted it. If I go the other direction I've got a fairly decent shot towards the west and so let's get a throw ball in that tree. I'm going to put the camera on the tripod. Okay I've got my throw ball out on the ground and I'm standing about 12 yards away from the tree. I've got to get going pretty tight and hot because I can't throw a high lob. There's too much junk in the tree. I've got to go in you know at a hard angle so this is a difficult throw it'll take a few tries uh, that's not really very good it was about 18 inches low so I'm assessing this as being a high risk retrieval and so I am going to go get my ball and start over there's just too much junk that it's over Nice thing about only carrying 75 feet of rope, of cord, we can just start over. You see what I mean? The throw ball went through the tree. I could have pulled it back, but I, I think it might have gotten caught. It's just safer, just safer to start over. Try to get a little higher this time. Oh, that was perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect throw. I mean, I hit the bullseye. Just got to be careful bringing my ball back up. I think I'm going to bring you guys in to take a look at that. There you go. I had to hit a very small window. I'll zoom in. I had to hit a window you can see the junk on either side, so I had to hit a pretty tight window to get that. All right, I'm going to get some paracord in there. Now, there's no branches here. There's no branches between uh, me and that line, and so it's not like I need to, uh, you know, jockey the ball back and forth between the other side. So I'm going to take my paracord. Okay, so here's my paracord preset. I, I have it so that both ends are about knee height. Now when I get to a tree I like to climb in a convention where I put the line up on the right and so this guy this is the strand for the right. There's some, there's some junk in the way. So I will mark that by creating an overhand end loop on that side only.
And so if this is the way I want to climb, how am I going to make sure that doesn't get disoriented? Well, here's, here's a little sucker. I'm going to use that. I'm going to put it around that sucker. And right here at this Y, that's where I will tie my slipped overhand bend. I'll tighten it. And I'll send this up into the canopy. It's not going to go anywhere. And it's high enough because we're in a floodplain. Even if a flood comes through, this isn't going to go anywhere. Let's take a look. There's the preset heading up into the tree. Now who would climb a tree like this? Who would? Everybody would pass by a tree like this. It doesn't matter that the trunk is not straight. What matters is that we've got a effectively a straight trunk at hunting height and by the way here's a peek the other direction I've got you know a decent shooting lane there and by the way plenty of deer sign there were a couple here when I got in here okay if if you'll accept the poor production quality we will get this video up and produced but uh, I, I've had a lot of folks asking me for content on tree selection there's just never uh, a good time and a good production opportunity so hopefully you found some value in this thank you guys